Chapter 4, Cost of Merchandise Sold, Part 3. And this will be the last part of this chapter. And today's class, I will cover the transportation costs and factors and back offices. And let's start from the transportation cost. Transportation cost will be the cost related to the shipping when you receive the product from your vendor. And oftentimes, retailers usually pay these transportation costs. And these transportation costs are considered part of the cost of merchandise because this is going to be the cost involved when you purchase the product from the vendor. And these must be covered in the retail price. So when you calculate your retail price, you really need to consider this transportation cost and other related costs for your retail price. And buyers can actually request types of transportation, like what kind of carrier they want, like fast or like uh, slow is okay, but uh, depending on the price and so on. So you can kind of determine what types of transportation carrier you want to have. And to understand this transportation cost, we have to understand this concept of the FOB. And this term will be something that you receive from your invoice. This FOB indicates free on board, or it can also be freight on board. So it's F R E I G H T. So freight on board or free on board. And this refers to points where ownership of merchandise transfer, and this also refers to points where responsibility of shipping expenses transfer. So two important you know, points about this FOB, if you see this term in your invoice, you can tell who has the ownership or the responsibility about the merchandise and or who will pay this shipping. So let's look at the first example of this FOB. It can be FOB factory, also called as FOB origin. So if you see this term, like FOB factory, FOB origin, that means that buyer takes title from the factory. So once it leaves from the factory, the buyer takes all the responsibility as well as the transportation charges. So that means that buyer takes title of the factory. Also any loss will be responsible by the buyer and also buyer pays all the transportation costs. And this is most common arrangement between the vendor and the retailer. And so if you see this FOB Chicago, and FOB factory and FOB origin, that means that your manufacturer is in Chicago and all these responsibility related to the title and the charges will be part of the buyer, not the vendors, right? So you think about this. So you, what you see right next to this FOB will determine who's in charge about the responsibility, about the title, or for the transportation charges, this can tell you. And the next example is going to be FOB destination. So that means that until you get the product for the final destination, the vendors will pay or the transportation cost and vendors will keep this title of the merchandise until it arrives to the final destination. So FOB destination. So if you see FOB Houston as a FOB destination, that means that that Houston is gonna be the store location or this like a warehouse of the store. Then until this product arrive to that place, the all the charges will be paid by the vendor and the title of the merchandise, also some you know responsibility of the loss and you know brokenness. All this gonna be part of the vendor, not the buyer. So this is the second term of this you know, FOB. And it can be FOB shipping consolidation points. So that means that vendor has title to goods until freight is delivered to a specific destination. And also, vendor pays for delivery to the specified destination. But this is not going to be the final destination. So you can kind of think that this is kind of like a shared you know, cost between the vendor and the retailer. And usually destination is the retailer's warehouse or the distribution center. And then from there, they will go to the you know, actual retailer store. But that point, you know, vendor is not, I mean, vendor does not you know, involved with this like a title or the payment. 
So once received at the distribution point, the retailer takes title and pays for further transportation costs. So that means that, you know, this cost kind of like shared by the vendor and the retailer. So this FOB shipping point is different from FOB factory and FOB destination. And you can more think that as a kind of a shared you know, cost about the transportation cost between the vendors and the retailer. And FOB destination charge is reversed. So as is, you can see, you already know the FOB destination, right? So this means that vendors own goods until they get to the buyer's designated point. So therefore, the final destination, vendor owns the goods and actually vendor may pay the first, you know, that the payment. But what's going to happen, this charge to be paid back to the vendor. And that means that buyers pay this transportation cost. So until it arrives to the final destination, who's in charge of the title for the you know, product, it's going to be vendor, right? But who's going to pay the transportation? That's going to be the buyer. So if there is like any problem with the product or any loss of the product will be, I mean, given to the vendor, not the buyer. But once again, transportation costs will be paid by the buyer. So you see the differences among these different FOB terms, right? So that's really important because that's how you're going to determine your, you know, transportation charges and who's in charge of the title and who's in charge of the loss and so on. So this is a really important concept to understand. If you're in the retail field and when you buy the product, you have to understand this concept. And now I'm going to introduce two different like uh, format of the I mean, companies, firms that addition to the vendors. Because, I mean, these are not going to be directly related to your, like, purchases and so on. But I want you to understand about this additional, you know, I mean, the the company format working closely with the vendor. The first one is going to be the factors. So this is the financial firm or institution that assists the vendors by acting as a credit or, you know, collecting the department. So for this case, I mean that uh, the vendors, so because you're buying the product from your vendor and for your like a payment and so on, vendor also need to get your, I mean the, the reason, they want to get the payment from you, from the retailer on time because they also need to pay for their, I mean the supplier, such as if that's the operator, you know, company, they also have to pay for the fabric company or any other, you know, material production. And also, they had to pay for their workers, and also they had to cover other overhead expenses, such as other, you know, indirect expenses. So, if vendors do not have available fund, they may have to rely on these outside firms to operating the capital, right? So, this is the reason the factory exists. Also, you know, this is gonna be the financial firm that will support the, you know, vendor to operate the properly. And typically, unpaid orders are given to this factor which supplies vendor with cash advances and collects payments from vendor's customer. And you will also will know this vector will willing to will be willing to take the risk because they charge a premium interest rate and a fee. So even though they kind of assist or like support for the financial wise, so if they don't really pay back on time to the factor, there will be like a premium like interest to pay, right? But then you also see the needs of this factor for the vendors as well, right? And the other concept is going to be the back office. Back office, they help, you know, and to eliminate or reduce some of the overhead costs of running businesses. So they are the, you know, the offices, you know, that not like a directly related to the buying or the, you know, controlling the purchasing or selling the product, but they're going to be in charge of this, like, a, you know, something related to the financial wise. Right? So you have to know about this, you know, the other types of, you know, offices that you support the vendor. Vendor hire these back offices because they can help you to, you know, control these other financial related issues and try to reduce some of the overhead cost. And they charge the fee for the services like importing, exporting, distribution, warehousing, and customer service. So what you can see from here, back office is more like the supporting company. It's more like a you know working 
for administrative work or the financial work. So not directly the buying or you know selling the product, but it's something related to that, you know, controlling these budgets, you know, and so on. So this is really important, I mean, like, you know, to understand because these are some additional, like, a form format that you can think about, you know. Also, the reason I mentioned these two different types of, you know, company, I mean, the, I mean, the factors, the firms, and the offices, is because, you know, you're a vendor. So when you make a payment to your vendor, your vendor also need to make, a, you know, payments for their other suppliers and also they have to pay their own employees so it's always good that everybody can make a good you know promise and you know, if they can keep those promises right but then otherwise if there are like in you know, some financial issues and you also have to know there are like other formats you know that they can support these vendors and so on and negotiation for other services so addition to the other concept that you learn you you know about the negotiating with the vendor you also you can you know for other services you can negotiate with your vendor as a buyer negotiate for services provided by the vendor and something like you know so you can get some additional you know support for packaging you know or you can get the support for some kind of you know their, you know, point of sale, I mean, the purchase, you know, selling, you know, aid, and they can help you too, like for the labeling or the advertising fee and so on, you can get some like additional support other than this, like a discount that you lost in the previous, you know, time. So that's really important because also this will assist the buyer in improving the profit margin. Because for example, if you, your vendor provides you this like a packages, or if they pre-ticket the pro I mean, product or they pre-rabeled you know the product then that will help you you don't have to spend money to buy these hangers and stuff so that's gonna be the I mean that's gonna be also helpful for the buyer to improve the profit margin and let me give you these examples of negotiable you know services these include packaging of merchandise for resale to retailers customer and pre-ticketing, labeling, and loss prevention, and cooperative advertising money, monetary reimburse for markdowns, confinement, and exclusivity of merchandise, and consignment selling, and point of purchase selling aids, and vendor participation in store promotional you know, events. So I already mentioned about the packaging, you know, this definitely help you to reduce the cost for packaging for the product and pre-ticketing and labeling and loss prevention as well. And your cooperative advertising money will be something they can support, you know, so to support you to promote the product and so on. So they did also help you. It's going to be the additional support and monetary reimburse for markdown so as i mentioned if you you know have some markdown that you didn't really think about and if you already have this kind of you know discussion with your vendor they can share the cost of this like a markdown so they can help you to improve your profit and gross margin and confinement exclusive merchandise can be promised for the specific you know the buyer and consignment selling means that return of the merchandise which is not sold so that means that they promise you if something is not sold if you have like really good you know relationship with your vendor also there's something that can be negotiated you know additional service so you can return this product or you can get other products you know other than that or you can get the money back and so on so that's gonna be the consignment selling and of course, the po I mean, post of purchase selling, you know, AIDS will help you. And such as, you know, poster, fixtures, or brochures, you know, provided at the point of the purchase will be the part of the support that you can get from your vendor. And vendor participation in store means that maybe that if the designer, you know, has some kind of, you know, selling their product in the store, they may come and they personally appear in the store and kind of help you for this promotional event. That's going to be also one of the support, you know, service that you can get from your vendor. Okay, that's pretty much it for this chapter. And let's just kind of briefly review what you learned this chapter. So we start to talk about the negotiation. 
because when you talk about these, you know, cost of merchandise sold, it's really important to negotiate to maybe get the better, you know, price and better, you know, services. So we learn about, you learn about this negotiation and discount that you can get. You learn different kinds of discount that you can get depending on maybe quantity or, you know, because of the payment you made so early, you can get some cash discount and so on. And you learn the dating. So there's a part of that, you know, related to your payment and cash discount and allowances and you also learn transportation costs as a part of cost of goods sold and you also learn the factors and back offices as the supporting you know company and the offices for your vendor so that's e4 chapter 4 so i hope you know I mean, now you know about this one, you know, component of your Beijing merchandising factor, which is the cost of merchandise sold. And this is going to be the big budget plan for your company once again, because you really need this product and you can actually really make a profit out of this uh, cost of, I mean, the merchandise that you purchase. So it's really important concept. So I want you to remember this and that's it for chapter four. And I'll see you the next time for chapter five.